Yo, what is going on to the YouTubes? How are y'all doing today? Hopefully, just hopefully, you're doing all right. Hopefully, you're not sick. That, that's what we could hope for, right? Uh, so there's things about this stream today that I want to talk about. There's uh, things that I, I can't necessarily talk about. There's things that I can't I can't say because uh, YouTube will uh, demonetize me. Well, look at that. Why is it doing that? That's so strange. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're not going to mention certain things, but we are going to talk about uh, what's going on, which is um, helping support remote users um, and what you can do to make sure your skills are relevant to um, supporting remote users. Because, as you guys know, there's, there's lots of things happening in the world today. Um, it's crazy. It, honestly, it's just so crazy to me. The, this whole thing is just absolutely uh, mind-blowing. I never thought I'd see anything like this in my entire life. So, here we are. Here we are. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I've been saying this for, for a couple days now to people. But let's talk about how we can help support our, uh, our end users. Uh, we want this one. Yep. All right. So obviously there's there's a few things that we could talk about for supporting remote users. And we need to talk about things that we should learn to help support our remote users. So I want to kind of collaborate with you guys. If there's anything that I that you feel like I miss during the stream on, on stuff that should be learned, please put it in the, in the chat. I uh, have the chat up here on the screen so everybody can see what we're doing. So... The first thing that we're going to talk about learning is VPN. Learn VPN, which is probably pretty obvious, right? Now, uh, VPN is virtual private network. If you're unfamiliar with that, I can try to give a brief explanation of it, but I don't feel like a brief explanation does it justice. So if you're unfamiliar with VPN, virtual private network, it can establish a secure connection from, for instance, your home computer to your work computer, which is obviously off-site. And when establishing that uh, re that remote connection, that VPN connection, uh, secure. It allows you access to your work network. Now, there's many different applications uh, for this. You know, you guys have probably heard of like Nord VPN. You maybe heard of like WatchGuard or uh, what is another one? Checkpoint. Uh, Watch WatchGuard and Checkpoint are more enterprise uh, solutions. Nord VPN, not so much enterprise, but it's just an example out there. You guys have probably seen a billion advertisements for um, uh, some type of VPN software. You're probably going to see many more companies, you know, require this. Um, so I, the, the point of this is when I say learn VPN, be familiar with what the, what VPN services do. Now you may find that you have to support users, add users to, you know, different VPN clients. You may be, um, adding your users to different Active Directory groups. You guys might be creating new group policies to help support all of this. There's really a lot involved there uh, on top of the Learn VPN. There's many things that I guess fall underneath that. But what I can tell you is uh, somebody just put in the chat, Sonic Wall, and hello everybody in the chat. So there, there's it's just a technology to be familiar with and you don't have to become an expert in it you just have to understand how these connections work and how to troubleshoot them and many times it's going to be an error with either yeah, user account creation passwords um or it, you're going to have that rare case where you do have to do some type of further troubleshooting and actually get involved with a end user's machine from home so what you're going to have to learn on top of that is remote connection software. Uh, it's probably a better word for that, but you know, there's things like Team Viewer, uh, there's things like Dameware, and uh, gosh, there's and I feel like there's quite a bit, bit of these as well. You guys can put it in the chat. Any that you use, um, somebody put Citrix too, which is was something we'll talk about. But uh, remote connection software like Team Viewer, which uh, it's like a limited trial type of thing. I forget how it works now because it's been so long since I've used it. Um, but I know that I you would always you could always get by using TeamViewer for free. But you guys may find that businesses and organizations are going to start requiring this type of software to help support your um, remote users. But on top of the software, I think what's really important to um, understand even is your things like uh, video chat. 
And then, of course, things like FaceTime, right? Like, honestly, FaceTime is going to be um, so extremely helpful for you if you are in any type of support position. Bombgar was another one. Yeah, I've used Bombgar in the past. Thank you. Um, yeah. Ooh. I'm going all over the place here. Uh, so, sorry. Anyway, I could see FaceTime <laughs> really being heavily used right now. I keep touching my face. You guys got to yell at me. I, I, I'm so accustomed to doing that. I keep trying to help myself to stop doing that. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the reason why I believe FaceTime is going to be one of the most utilized pieces of technology that you're going to have to at least know and understand. And when I say FaceTime, I st you could still be utilizing Android's um, video messaging service. Um, you could be utilizing something like Zoom even through somebody's phone or you guys are both using your phones to have a Zoom session. Um, but what's important here is having a visual of what is happening on your end users or your remote users computer or their situation. So that's something that I, I really feel like is going to be used heavily because you don't know what somebody's home environment looks like, right? So if they're having trouble connecting or they're having trouble with something, many of the time you're gonna find that your end users just don't understand technology, they're not good with it. Um, and instead of trying to get them to set up a Zoom session when they could be having problems, I think it's really important that you establish like a FaceTime connection, right? You establish some type of video connection that uh, may be a little bit easier for them to use on their phone so that you can actually visualize and see what is going on. They can kind of walk you through it a little bit easier. Um, you know, say if it's a, a cable issue, you're, you're running, you're, you're following the cables um, from their computer to their uh, modem or their their modem to their router. Um, many times you're going to find that, you know, th these, especially end users or remote users are using um, like a Comcast all-in-one box. Um, you may find that within certain businesses also, uh, talk about WatchGuard. You could have like Soho's uh, put into place for your remote users because you've already established uh, remote connections in the past for you for your users. So these are uh, just a couple of things. You know, right now I'm telling you guys that I, I think it could be very helpful for you. Learning VPN and remote connection software um, are going to be huge. Um, so understanding this stuff, you know, I'm not saying you have to become an expert in all of these, but these are going to be really uh, big things that you should probably at least pick up on, learn, understand. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is, of course, um, remote collaboration uh, software. So you got like Microsoft Teams. I'm sorry if this keyboard is too loud and clicky. You guys are probably going to yell at me for that soon. Uh, Microsoft Teams, their Discord, uh, their Slack. Now, if you guys haven't used these before, which many companies haven't utilized these, now is probably the time where you're going to start seeing more of this because you're going to have to have more communication um, from your 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 company, your users, your staff, etc. So they might uh, integrate one of these platforms, whether it's Teams, Discord, Slack. Uh, the list probably really goes on at this point. But these are some of the, the things that you're going to have to understand, at least at a functionality level, how it works and how you at least administer your Teams or your Discord or your Slack. And um, again, it's just something to know. You don't have to become an expert in it. It's just making sure you kind of understand at a ground level how these services work because you may need to support them. Um, as far as the skills and everything relevant, of course, we've talked about... Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. My phone keeps going off. We talked about... Uh, the a few things here that you should be learning uh, along with you know the FaceTime thing it's going to be a lot of that, that kind of hands-on troubleshooting without your hands being on it because you're gonna to have to walk your end users through certain things especially when they're having connectivity issues uh, I can imagine that's gonna be a large issue as we um, go further through w with what's happening in the world and us having to support more uh, more remote people uh, you guys have probably heard that um, Comcast is offering, uh, you know, free internet for um, f for people who are, are don't make like a certain amount of money. I, there's a better word or better term for that. Um, 
So you may see, you know, the internet as a whole could become flooded in many ways, but probably not. I've read a couple articles on that today, which is kind of amusing, but I think we'll be all right. Um, You just might find that, you know, like today, actually today even, I had uh, internet connectivity issues for about four hours. Our Comcast was down. It was just in my area too, which was so frustrating. I called like three times trying to figure out what the heck was going on because I wanted the stream to happen earlier, and it didn't. But, um you know, again, being hands-on with your users uh, is going to be very important. A lot of connectivity issues, so troubleshooting. We're going to say connectivity issues. We're going to talk about uh, uh, supporting your uh, remote VPN users, uh, i.e. Um, uh, creating uh, accounts, resetting accounts, uh, etc. You're going to find that happening very often so yeah somebody just brought up patience you're definitely gonna have to hey roman what's up roman how you doing here i got i need to make sure roman has been extremely helpful on this channel so there we go roman i appreciate your support and your help be yeah, a lot of patience because uh supporting remote users <laughs> it's gonna be difficult it's gonna be difficult it really is Um, so you're also going to find, you know, um, resetting your active directory accounts. You're going to be supporting, I got to put this one in its own thing because, uh, mobile devices, uh, email accounts, VPN, uh, applications. So mobile devices are going to be another big one. I think happening, uh, you may have, you make work in environments where not a lot of, uh, your users currently have their email attached to their phone or they've never logged into your OWA or they've never logged into um, Office 365 from the web. So these these are things to definitely be aware of and to understand how it all works, how it functions. Uh, you may be having to create, uh, we're gonna put this here, let's go back up. Create documentation create videos also that'll be a good one for sure um so going back to supporting email you're gonna have to make sure you can walk somebody through setting up their email on their phone or walk somebody through uh connecting to your owa or office 365 uh via the web so creating documentation for something like this would be extremely beneficial to you and i cannot stress this enough how important creating documentation for some of the most frequent troubleshooting things that you will be doing coming up because instead of uh you know many times walking somebody through you may be able to provide the best documentation to them meaning you have provided step by step with pictures or with video that can really just explain everything that they need to do and it'll help you you know resolve issues more quickly it'll help you you know close more tickets which is always going to be great for you but that documentation piece i think is probably one of the biggest things that i want you guys to take away from this live stream because if you could create a proper documentation, like I said, you will find that supporting your users will become much easier. Um, you'll find probably as you're getting many tickets assigned to you, you know, coming to your inbox, you can briefly look them over and send them, you know, uh, the proper documentation that you've created to help support their issues. So even creating documentation for creating email accounts or uh, connecting to Slack, um, you're using TeamViewer, you know, whatever that case is, start putting that into place because when you come across the more trouble uh the more troublesome types of issues that take longer you know being able to support all of your users is going to be important um and as you know establishing um some type of resolution in a timely manner so that's why the documentation i feel like is is very very important here and um if you guys have anything to add to that definitely put it in the chat um, this is, I want this to be, you know, kind of a, a more of a collaboration type of thing here because there's going to be some things that I miss and I, I want to make sure everybody, um, can take away some valuable information from the stream. I want to make this document that I've created here, uh, on Google docs available after the stream. So you guys can view it, um, afterwards. Um, and then hopefully we can add stuff to it too. So, uh, somebody put in, um, uh, cloud services. Uh, so we're talking, you know, Dropbox, um, OneDrive, 
These are these are definitely going to be um, touching my face again. So terrible. Gosh, can't help myself. I've washed my hands a bunch today, so we're good. Hopefully, cross my fingers. Um, supporting your users, collaborating together. So uh, Dropbox, OneDrive, One. No, what is what is the other one? One, one drive, Dropbox, one, Google Drive, whatever. <laughs> There's so many different ones out there. Um, this is going to be important to know too, how that syncing works. Uh, you may have to explain this to your users very thoroughly if they are collaborating on documents together and utilizing Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive. Make sure you uh, explain how you know the synchronization works so they're not overwriting each other's work. <laughs> That's gonna be really important. Um, you know, other cloud services that you might end up supporting um, because you're helping just in general everybody out uh, enterprise hang on i got a cough here all right hopefully yep that's back enterprise cloud services uh where was i going with that uh enterprise cloud services so aws uh, google cloud uh, azure you may have to just be familiar with these services if they are utilized in your environment. I don't have to go back. I want to go back to cloud services, though, uh, supporting your, your end users. Um, make sure you, you you just have a good understanding of how these services work. Uh, you might have to create documentation again for this type of stuff so that your users know how to install it. They know what to expect. They know how they can drag and drop uh, their different files and things like that into OneDrive, uh, making sure that's syncing back uh, to the cloud. Yeah, Citrix and VMware troubleshooting, we can put that. Uh, Citrix, uh, VMware. Those are good ones too, thank you for that. But yes, yeah, so that, that I think this is a pretty good um, rundown of what to expect. And this person was putting something here, so I wanna make sure I read it. <clears throat> All right, they're asking about some career advice that I'm not ready to give right now. But hello to everybody in the chat. Yeah, troubleshooting client side issues if you're supporting BYOD. So obviously you um, you don't have much control over your end users devices, unless you have uh, an MDM established. Supporting, I wanna make sure I put that in there. Uh, this is gonna be very important. I can see more companies utilizing uh, MDM, which is mobile device management. So I should probably put that in parentheses so you guys know, mobile device management. If you don't already have something like this established, you may find that you uh, are, are gonna start integrating that into your environment. Um, so supporting, again, your end users devices. Uh, this is again where like something like FaceTime is gonna come into play, something like Zoom is going to come into play, or uh, you know some stuff like TeamViewer. So um, making sure that you are comfortable with supporting somebody's home device uh, because you have, you're gonna have no idea what the heck is going on with their home devices. Uh, I remember when I was working at the hospital and we had to support um, any type of home, like end users home computers in any way. It was always a touchy subject because you know we, we have no control over what they do and I can't tell you how many times I've had to support some user um, who had some type of malware on their machine and it just becomes a nightmare. Um, so yeah. Uh, back to MDM though, so mobile device management, you'll see this, um, you'll, you'll enroll your mobile phones, your iPhones, your Android devices, your iPads, your Galaxy tabs or whatever, who cares about those things anyway, but whatever. Uh, even laptops and things like that you know, could be enrolled in some type of mobile device management solution. Um, there's things out there that I'm, like, I'm familiar with AirWatch, there's what, Iron Watch or Iron, Iron something. Iron something. Um, <clears throat> can't think uh, the name of that one, but that's all right. 
Uh, Zach, you might... What's up, Job Skillshare? How you doing, boss? Good to see you here. Zach, you might want to add PCI hardened laptops. Many customers were taking payments on prom. Now it created a challenge of hardening laptops for customer service. Yeah, I mean, that's another aspect of it, too. There's so much to, to be to look at here. Um, yeah, BYOD can definitely be a nightmare, and a lot of businesses are definitely moving towards that. So that's where I could see definitely um, mobile device management coming hard into place. So being familiar with MDM uh, could be something that you you look into. Mobile iron, I think it was mobile iron, yeah. You guys in the chat, you guys are the, the real VIPs. Not me. There's a couple other big uh, MDM solutions out there as well uh, that you guys could probably look into. But just understanding how that works is going to be helpful for you. keep coughing i don't have the i don't have the thing though i don't have the thing i don't have a fever i don't have any other symptoms but like all of my kids have been sick from the first of the year like it's been like non-stop i got four kids right so it's been like one like at all times no matter what since like the first of the year we've all been sick and they keep giving me their sickness oh. but i don't have that thing that's going around as far as i know i'll get checked for it if i start running a fever um, so anyway, I think these are some of the most important things that I can think of to take note of, um, to at least understand at even a ground level, how all of these different services work, um, what you can do to support them is, you know, just being familiar with, uh, what they do, right? Just being familiar with, um, the order in which they are, are meant to service your end users, right? So... Uh, you have a fever, man. Son has ear infection, both ears. That sucks. If you have a fever, I would be concerned. Like I am totally concerned if I start getting a fever. I have been checking my temperature like all day, like four times today. So yeah, that's quite a bit. I've been checking a bunch just to make sure, because you never know. I haven't left the house since Friday though. Like I refuse to leave. I don't want to. Like I don't want to leave this house. I don't want to go anywhere. I'm just going to stay hunkered down here. I'm going to try to do, I, I told the wife, I was like, I'm going to try to do a live stream every single day um, just to be out there and talk to you guys and, you know, help support the channel somewhat because, you know, it's going to be hard times for a lot of people. It's going to be hard times for me. I've already noticed uh, YouTube reven revenue declining um, quite severely. <laughs> so it's very concerning to me because this is, my income this is how i make money so uh not that you guys have to worry about it. i always try to make this you know free for you guys to to understand um but ways that you can help support the channel are you know signing up for like the youtube membership or buying one of those cool it um it pro gi joe t-shirts you know stuff like that it's appreciated in this in these times it's very much appreciated but uh, this isn't about that like this is about helping you guys um support your users and understand the technologies that you can learn or just begin to be familiar with how's the remodeling of the studio going um you know so far it's all right uh the kids have been home with me since last friday so i haven't got a lot of work done uh the walls are finally all painted though which is great uh, i need to start hanging stuff up on the walls you know I've, i got like that hung up on the wall but like nothing else right so that's all good you'd, you'd think more people would be watching youtube since they're at home well you know what they probably are there's their youtube is probably having like very high numbers at this point um but it's the advertisers really you know, you, we're probably going to have a lot of advertisers um, pulling away um, in, in, in these times. I'm going to add the Microsoft Intune. I always forget my Microsoft Intune. Intune, there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Ricardo, Zach, in the remote connection software section, I you suggest that you have the two most common... Ones remote desktop for Windows and SSH. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, remote desktop. Uh, 
uh, it's built into Windows. And SSH uh, for Linux, BSD, Unix flavors. Taking you word for word there, sir. Thank you very much for that. Always, always helpful. Community effort. I love it. Thank you, JA, for uh, for helping out there with joining as a member. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Shout out to JA. Yeah, so job skills share. Uh, panic people won't be watching YouTube, but again, maybe after some time, yes, YouTube might blow up. That's we have no idea what to expect, right? Like <laughs> If, if, if you're in this chat right now, we've never seen anything like this ever happen before. Ever. Especially in the United States, where daycares are closing, schools are closing, businesses closing. It's nuts, dude. It's so nuts. What's up, Javier? Yeah, thank you again, Ricardo. I appreciate that, bro. Um, can you participate in a question on the entry level of digital world or I can't, if I may, can you scroll up into my inquiry? Whoo. A cough is brutal. All right. So Mito, let's try to answer your question real quick. I, I, I want to end the stream, um, talking about what we're doing here though. Which path in the digital world is recommended for? For your own developer. Uh, you asked like a very, very long question. You need to be more precise on your question. AnyDesk for remote connection. More software. AnyDesk. There's another one. Um, <clears throat> another thing that will probably be helpful for you guys too is, you know, making sure ticketing. Create, create uh, detailed tickets not that you don't already do this but i think it's really important uh if you're not doing it or you're not doing a, a good job of it is to really create a lot of documentation within your ticketing system too especially if you are working in a, a large environment that you have a lot of techs uh, that are su helping support your end users i think it's very important within your ticketing system that you document everything that you've done to help your remote user um, <clears throat> excuse me, so that, <clears throat> oh my gosh. So if they call back in and they get another tech, uh, that tech can follow up on that ticket um, and look at the details of those notes. Again, hopefully you're already doing something like this, but if you're not, uh, it's going to be very crucial that you do or establish something for this. So even with, this could even come into detail with um, some type of collaboration software. So if you guys are utilizing, you know, your Teams, your Discord, um, Slack, maybe creating a separate channel for um, tickets and users um, so that you can at least keep every, you know, other people within your department aware of what you're doing. So, uh, did I add Mac OS support? No, I didn't. So, that should fall, that could fall under remote connection software. Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know where I want to put that. We can just put that in its own thing. Supporting Mac users. Uh, understanding um, Mac as a whole. This might be more difficult for you guys to do. Um, who've never used a Mac before or don't who don't have one available to you. You guys are probably going to have to do a lot of research. Gosh. Hang on one second. Let me. Oh, all right. Can't stop coughing. <clears throat> Hopefully I'm okay. Uh, so anyway, understanding Mac as a whole. So researching uh, is gonna, probably going to be a big thing for you if you've never used a Mac before. Um, of course, there's going to be a lot of different software um, and stuff like that could be utilized within a Mac. You're also going to run into things like Zoom and um, even like Discord, Slack, whatever things that could be installed onto a, a Mac computer, an Apple computer. Uh, Mac, 
I should put Apple. Because you're going to be supporting iPhones too. iPads. Uh, so yeah. You might just have to do a little bit more research. Um, and and tr it's going to be difficult. It, it, it will be difficult for you guys out there who have never used Mac before. And I know there's a lot of you out there. So... Um, but the point of that is understanding and supporting Mac users. It's a completely different operating system than what, from what you could be used to. So you really may not be familiar with trying to troubleshoot, uh, some of the issues that you're going to run into there. So there's that. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Hang on. All right, I had to get a couple good coughs out. I don't want you guys to see me flailing like a, a, a banshee. Uh, log me in for remote control? Yeah, there's log me in. Uh, in. What's the Citrix one too? The, uh, what's the actual name of it? Oh, there's also what, any connect? You don't put that on there either. Uh, I had, did I put troubleshooting client side issues? I don't think I did. I probably should be in there maybe, but that's kind of like a general statement. Client side issues. I mean, gosh, <clears throat> one of, Oh, uh, great resource. Great resource. Yep. 98.com. This might be a really great resource for you guys um, supporting your end users from home, especially those who have BYOD or obviously their own home equipment. Uh, 99.com, if you guys are unfamiliar with this, let's pull it up real quick. This can save you a world of trouble. I mean, honestly, this is gonna be huge for a lot of you out there. If you've never used this before, you're not familiar with it. If, say your environment supports Chrome, uh, you want your users to use Google Chrome or, or Firefox. Here's Discord, Skype. Um, here's some runtimes that may be required for certain things. Who knows? There's Dropbox, OneDrive, um, uh, compression software, 7-Zip, WinRare, um, some of the most popular ones. Oh, my goodness. Team Viewer. Um, Screenshot is the best freaking screenshot software I've ever used in my whole entire life. But anyway, if you've never used Night Night before, uh, this is the home page. As soon as you go to it, you can select every single thing that you want it to install. Let me find one that I may not have installed here. Uh, I don't think I have Notepad++. Not that I'll use it. But anyway, you select everything that you want uh, from this list. Click on get your night night, download installer. So you might have to walk somebody through um, how to um, navigate to their downloads folder or how to download this correctly. Um, um, so that, that's just another thing. Steve Gee, uh, I don't, maybe I did get your email. I'm not sure, sir. I apologize if, uh, if I didn't respond back. Things have been, as you know, things have been kind of crazy here. Oh yeah, I got your email, bro. I will, I'm pulling it up right now so that it's open so that I can reply back to it. So we'll get you, bro. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, sorry, where did I, where did I go? For? Okay, so night night. Uh, so then you can just click it open and it'll actually install <clears throat> all that software that we selected. I guess you guys can't see that part of the screen. That's my bad. Let me, actually I had all that stuff installed. Let me find one that I don't. I don't want to put WinRAR on my computer though. I don't want that garbage. Uh, here, let's put GIMP on. I've never, I never messed with uh, GIMP. So anyway, select all your stuff. Let me, let me get a screen capture going here. Nope, nope, nope. Just, yeah, this will do it. 
So then anyway, you could click on uh, Get Night Night, Download Installer. There we go. That's what we wanted. Click on Save. Open this bad boy up. And then it goes through <clears throat> the entire installation process for everything that you selected. So this is going to be something that you can, it's, it's extremely clutch for you guys to be utilizing to support your uh, remote users to make sure you know that they install all this stuff properly and really quite easily. So there's that for you guys. Um, I hope this information helps you guys out. I'll put a link to this document uh, in the description of this video. Oh, I got no audio, do I? No, I do. Okay. Uh, I'll put a link to, to everything in the description of this video so you guys can access it later. Um, share it. Get a shareable link. I don't want anybody to edit. Can view. Yep, can view. Copy link. getting this added to the description right now or at least I'm trying to uh, edit details there we go There now that you, sh you should find the link in the description of this video. You might have to refresh the page, um, but it'll be there. Uh, IT career questions: Is the application support analyst part of IT? Yeah, yeah, that's part of IT. Supporting applications for sure. Yes, DV, I'll I'll respond back to you as soon as I can, bro. Uh, is there anything else that I missed? I think we're good. I think we covered. Uh, most of what I wanted to go over here um, If you guys have anything that you want to add uh, Throw them in the comments um, of this video. I greatly appreciate it. If you guys want to help support the channel You guys know there's links in the description for um, Joining the, the membership or buy a t-shirt because that does help especially in these times I Do greatly appreciate it. You guys have no idea. You know, this is how this is how I work. This is how I make money so if you guys uh, can support I do appreciate that very very much. I'm here to help I want to help you guys as much as I can achieve success in this field I don't ask for anything ever. So I'm not really asking now if you can do it You can if you can't believe me. I understand um, Thank you guys in the chat who helped uh, answer some of these questions and uh, provide feedback and Contribute to this it is so greatly appreciated to have a community like you guys out there who help support us and uh, give people the information that they need. Thank you guys and uh, 